morning, good morning. Great to see you guys on here. Sorry for the uh, little delay there, um, technical difficulties. I feel like anytime you're dealing with technology, you can say, hey, it was technical difficulties. But it really was, was trying to uh, get things, um, making sure they were moving on the right timeline. But anyways, hello, hello, happy January 10th. We're already 10 days into 2021. I hope you are having fun. Tell somebody that if you are next to them. 2021, hope you're having fun. All right, give you just a second there to do that. Good morning, good morning. Great to see you guys on. My parents, good to see you. Lopez's, Jude, uh, if I'm missing anyone else, I know sometimes these take a second to come in. Um, might be someone else there that it got covered up by something, but um, we're ready to have church today. Looking forward to um, just sharing with you today and also looking forward to this week because we are starting our 21 days prayer and fasting. Uh, good morning, Dexter. Good to see you. And family, the Haley's. Good to see you guys. Um, we're starting our 21 days of prayer and fasting tomorrow. Um, so January 11th through January 31st, we will be praying and fasting together. I've already sent out, um, and I'll get into the details of this a little bit later. I've sent out some resources, but we will send those again, um, to your phones, to your emails. We, we sent it out as a link to our website, but we'll make sure that you have, um, the resources you need to, to get started and to um, be praying and believing with us. We have some great things in store. So I just want to open up with prayer today. Obviously, today is a great day. It's the 10th day of the year. 10 meaning that God is in complete control. I'm big into what numbers mean. That He, It's the number of dominion. It's the number of uh, God is um, in, in, in rule of everything. And so... Um, I hope that today you sense that, you sense that God is in control, that he's for you, he's not against you, he's with you, he's not away from you, he's near, not far, and so let's just pray right now, just uh, maybe put your hands on your heart, or one hand on your heart, or lift your hands, however you want to receive from God today, I just ask that God, you would move in this place, you would move in every room, God, wherever people are watching from, wherever God, they may be right now, both physically, mentally, spiritually. God, we pray for a, um, a closeness to you, God. If we feel far from you, I pray you would draw us near. God, as we draw near to you today, God, your word promises that you draw near to us. And so today we ask, God, for your favor. We ask for your blessing, not just in material things, God, but for health and strength and mental health and physical health, God. We pray, God, that you would move mountains, God, that are in the way that need to be moved, God. Today, we just honor and glorify your name, God. We're going to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We're going to worship you with our heart, God, and by lifting of our hands. Come on, the Bible says, as we lift up our hands, it's unto the King of kings, it's unto the King of glory. And so today, if you, if you feel led, you can lift your hands, you can lift your voice, you can clap if you want. Um, we're doing some slower songs, so you may not clap, but um, really just step into a time of worship today because that's what um, I desire in my life is to step into the presence of God more and more this year than I did last year. And I hope that for you too and pray that for you too. And so uh, we're going to get started here with a few songs. Um, we ended last um, last week's um, service with a link to a song that we're going to start off with this morning. It's called, it's an old hymn, but it's kind of redone by Elevation Church. And they're an amazing church in North Carolina. Pastor Stephen Furtick. Um, I'm not name dropping. I don't even know him. So I uh, just know him from his videos. But um, just wanted to start off with this song. The words simply go like this, and I'll put them on the screen. I have decided to follow Jesus says that three times, and no turning back, no turning back. Then says, though none go with me, I still will follow. Says that three times, and then no turning back, no turning back. And then there's 
um, a course that will go into everything, all I am and all I have to bring. I will give to you my everything. And then I will follow my heart, surrender, my Jesus, I am yours. And I will follow my heart, it, my life in your hands, my Jesus, I am yours. And so we're just going to um, play this today. And I'm just asking for God to just renew our commitment to him today. You may have been a Christian a long time. You may have just started following him. Uh, whatever place you are, I think this is like one of those prayerful songs that we can just sing to the Lord, just saying, you know what, my heart decided whether a long time ago or a short time ago to follow Jesus, and I'm not turning back because he's good. Even though hardships have come, even though I've had losses, even though I've had pain, even though through the trials and the tribulations, I have decided to follow him and there's no turning back. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Sing that again. I am your 
all I am and all I have to bring. I will give to you my everything. All I am and all I have to bring. Oh. right now, just wherever you're at, just in this moment, just begin to tell Jesus how much you need him, how much you're desperate for him. Come on, whatever state you might be in, whatever home you're in, whatever place you're in, whatever you're feeling right now, just tell Jesus, Jesus, I'm desperate for you. I need more of you, God. That's why we go into these seasons of seeking God in prayer and fasting because, come on, we're desperate for Him. We're hungry for Him. We, we're longing for more of Him. And He's what we want. He's what we desire. Oh, we need you, God. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Would you fill our lives? Would you fill our lives now, God? Oh,
just for this time to worship together. We just pray your presence would fill our lives, would fill every place that we're in. We just ask right now you just bless and cover the rest of this time together online. We know that you are the one that is everywhere, so you're the one connecting us, God, just through this time. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said amen. Amen. Amen, or a double whoop hand in the comments. Um, it's good to be just here with you today and worshiping. I believe that, you know, in this time of prayer and fasting, don't forget times to worship. Don't forget to, whether you play an instrument or, you know, you just sing or don't sing or don't play an instrument, put on some worship music, sing along with it, or just sing, just sing to God and lift your hands. And worship's not always about singing. And so you could even just come before him and in prayer and worshipfully uh, lifting your hands to him. And so we just pray that you have a, a deeper um, time in the presence of God as we go into this prayer and fasting season. Um, before we get into the word today, we want to take a moment to um, just take our tithes and offerings. Our sowing and faith scripture today is from Proverbs eleven twenty four. And um, it says this, one gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. And so the prayer out of that scripture today is, Lord, help me be one who gives freely. When I feel like withholding what I should give, remind me that the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy or those who hang on to everything gets smaller and smaller. Come on, that is so true that if we try to hang on to everything, we talked about it last week, if we try to find our life, we actually, or if we if we lose our life, we gained it, gain it. If we try to find our life and hang on to it, we actually end up losing it. And so same principle with giving and receiving. When we hold withhold what we should be giving, come on, we should be praying, God, remind me that that's not the way to live. We need to release into the kingdom of God, sow into the kingdom of God, be tithing and giving, whether it's our faith harvest or whether it's a special offerings that you feel led at times. When you sense the Holy Spirit moving you to give, you should do that because the world of the generous gets bigger and bigger. When we hang on to things, we actually end up losing them many times anyways. And so um, for our tithes and offerings, obviously, um, you can go online um, at alivechurchnyc.com slash give, or you can request our mailing address by emailing connectedalivechurchnyc.com, and uh, we'll send you that info. So I want to just pray right now, God, we just pray for each gift, each giver, pray for those who are experiencing lack to have faith, to completely trust in you, those who are experiencing maybe uh, more than enough, God, we pray that they would have the heart to continue to give, God, and to give by faith, God. We sow in faith, believing for a harvest, and so uh, we just sow today, believing that you're going to bring a great harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, just want to um, remind you that tomorrow we start our 21 days of prayer and fasting. 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I hope that you can join in. I hope that um, you can at least join in in some sort of fast. There's kind of some levels of fasting. And I just wanted to um, show you here. Daniel fast is good um, to start with if you want. There's You can eat fruits and veggies and nuts and, and seeds. We have pumpkin seeds here. Organic. You don't have to have organic. But hey, sometimes that's good. You can eat dates. These are a great treat on the Daniel Fast because they're sweet, but they're not um, sh sweetened with sugars and it's natural sugar. Brussels sprouts. Uh, come on. We, we love the Daniel Fast around here. You might def decide to fast completely, to do a complete fast. Um, that's up to you. But please, if you have any concerns about fasting, uh, you could ask your doctor or medical professional about your specific health. But we do believe that fast, fasting uh, is a time to draw near to God. And so don't um, don't just have it a time to be a diet change. Really seek God. Get into His presence. Um, 
whether you're just maybe you're doing a media fast which we like to call like a soul fast like you're watching what is entering into your soul and so you're uh, kind of putting those guards on what you're watching what you're um, maybe you're not watching anything and so uh, maybe uh, you want to do a media fast social media fast however you see fit or maybe you add kind of layers you're doing a Daniel fast with media fast and, and finding time the key is to find time to seek God get into his word get into prayer and again not just do a diet change but to actually fast uh, by seeking him and getting uh, into prayer times and so I encourage you um, as we send out the resources even uh, today we'll do the, that again we sent um, a, some resources out earlier this week um, some great ideas of how to start your fast or what kind of fast to do but 21 days of fasting comes from the book of Daniel when he was fasting and praying for um, for 21 days and it took 21 days for the angel Gabriel to come to him and say I was held up fighting fighting in the prince uh, fighting the princes of the air and I was in battle in in that 21 days he had a breakthrough and so we believe for that 21 day breakthrough you know they experts say it takes about 21 days sometimes to make or break a habit and so we're believing that as we uh, seek God that hopefully that becomes a habit in your life and so um, more details to come in an email if you have any questions please reach out to us uh, we will be doing some live streams um, with our daily um, um, resource that we have from Pastor Frank Damasio. It's uh, 21 prayers that will enlarge your life. So we're going to um, focus in on that for 21 days and then also on Wednesdays. So this Wednesday and then the next three Wednesdays, we will actually have uh, some prayer meetings online um, in Google Meet and we hope you can join us. We'll send out that info for you. But we're looking forward to prayer and fasting. Um, and we really hope you can join in for that. Um, switching gears here to get um, some time for the word. I uh, wanted to just kind of do an intro into this because it's 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 been something that's really spoken to me. And I don't want to rush through this season. Um, obviously, it's a new year. Obviously, in, in new year, we... Um, in New Year's, some of us maybe believe in setting resolutions. I know there's studies out there that show that why New Year's resolutions never work. And maybe you're one of those who um, who kind of sticks to that and just tries to each day maybe make steps towards what you want to see accomplished in your life or what you want to prepare yourself for. Um, or maybe you're one that really does believe in um, New Year's resolutions and making that fresh start. Um, to start the year, whatever side of the boat you might be on, on resolutions and all that, I do believe that we should be the kind of people that are preparing ourselves, but also preparing in other ways for God to move in this time and season. And prayer and fasting is one of those preparation places the, the Holy Spirit begins to move in and through our life. And so that's really the title of um, the next several messages that we'll do during this season is prepare. I think of the Lion King when Scar sings, be prepared. Ah, that powerful song when he's with the hyenas and walking through the, I don't know, the low, the... I don't know, I can't remember what they're called, the pits or something, the um, the dark area of the land that um, Scar is preparing to take over the kingdom. We're not preparing to take over God's kingdom. We're preparing to be a part of it in a greater way. And so I uh, wanted to talk today about prepare and not in a way of just preparing yourself, but the Bible talks about, and we're going to get into uh, kind of this deep concept and I, I got to be honest, I was inspired by uh, Pastor Bill Scheidler, um, a message that I heard from him and um, was able to really glean from some resources he has 
um, to put this message together because it was powerful. It impacted me. And the idea of preparing not just ourselves, but preparing the way of the Lord, preparing the way of the Lord, that that is the call on the church um, is to prepare the way of the Lord to impact people's lives. A lot of times we get focused on, especially in the new year, of preparing ourselves. I gotta, I gotta work out. I gotta prepare my body to to be a better body this year, or to be ready for summer, or to um, you know eat healthy. I'm gonna prepare to eat healthy. I'm gonna prepare my food differently. I'm gonna prepare to do things differently this year. And then we realize that we've prepared things for ourselves and haven't done a whole lot to prepare the way of the Lord that God could reach some other people. And it's good to prepare ourselves because we need to be prepared spiritually. We need to be prepared um, and be healthy and be strong so that we can be those that help lead people into the presence of God. Because if we're not experiencing the presence of God, we forget how good it is. And so we forget to lead people into that. But we need to prepare the way of the Lord, just like John the Baptist did. He prepared the way of the Lord. He prepared the way of the Lord. If you notice, John the Baptist doesn't have a whole lot of miracles recorded, but he does have a heart that was prepared to say, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. He's greater than I. He's better than me. And, and I think in this time and season, we need to be those that are preparing the way of the Lord more than any any time in history because things are out of whack. Things are getting crazy. Things are getting out of hand. And if we just sit back as church, as, as a church body, locally, globally, uh, we will take it upon ourselves to maybe guard what God has given us and not start preparing the way for God to move in someone else's life. And so... I want to read a couple scriptures here, and uh, the first one comes from Malachi 3, um, verse 1. Malachi 3, verse 1, if you want to open up your Bible or get your phone and follow along with me, that would be great. So we're going to read Malachi 3, 1, because Malachi prophesied two different seasons of Jesus's visitation of Christ coming to the earth and the first coming of Christ that was to be prepared by the Lord Lord's messenger who had the spirit and power of it of Elijah and we'll read it here Malachi 3 1 says behold I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me somebody say prepare excellent and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. He was speaking of John the Baptist in that prophecy, Malachi was, that John the Baptist would be the one that would come and prepare the way of the Lord. And in Luke 1.17, the angel told Zechariah, he said, he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I think this season is a time to prepare for the Lord, but we need the power and the spirit. We need the power of God and the spirit of God. And the Bible talks about it as as being the power and the spirit of Elijah. And we're going to look at that a little bit here today um, and then more in the coming weeks. But the second coming of Christ, so that, that preparation time has already taken place because Jesus came to the earth. He died on the, he came to the earth as a baby. We celebrated that at Christmas. He died on the cross. That's Easter coming up. And then he rose from the dead. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father and we're waiting for the second time that he's going to come back. Now, we don't know the day or the hour that's going to happen. It could be 50 years from now. It could be 500 years from now. I'm not putting a date on it. I never would do that. But 
we do realize that each day we live, we get closer to that moment when Jesus will come back and this whole thing will be wrapped up and we'll move into eternity, whether in heaven with him or in hell away from him. And so there's an importance about being prepared. There's an urgency, but yet there's also an enjoyment. And we can't miss out on um, the, the urgency part and just be enjoying ourselves so much and enjoying excuse me, this world and this life so much that we miss the urgency part, but we can't be so urgent and, 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 and overwhelming that we don't connect with people to help them find the way to the Lord. John the Baptist uh, was a great picture of being urgent. Repent for the kingdom of God is, is here. It's, it's near and we need to repent and we need to be ready but yet he took steps to help baptize people, to help point people to Jesus. When Jesus came, he was urgent, but yet you could see he realized it wasn't all about him. He said, I must become less so he can become more. The second coming of Jesus that was to be prepared by a ministry or people with the same Elijah anointing. So the second coming of Jesus, the church globally needs to be operating in spirit and power, the spirit and power that was on Elijah. Malachi 4, 5 through 6, he prophesies this, says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The great and dreadful day of the Lord, meaning when he comes back, it's going to be great for those who know him, but it will be dreadful for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So we've got to be those that prepare the way. We, we've not only prepared our own hearts for him to come, but we've prepared the way for others to come to him. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Elijah had a couple distinctions on the way that God used him, the way that he ministered in his day. And that was an anointing for the miraculous. He, he did many miracles. His anointing, the Elijah anointing is to help prepare the way of the Lord for the second coming. So I believe, and, and I've talked with other pastors, I'm not just kind of, um, on my own trying to come up with these kind of ideas, but I believe God wants to do the miraculous more and more in this time and season to draw people to him, not, not to be the, this show that we as Christians put on, but it's a way to prepare for what God wants to do in the coming days and in these end times, because we do live in the end times. We just don't know how close we are to the very last day. We need to be ready and prepare the way of the Lord. I, so often I, I, I realize that I prepare the way for myself. So often I realize that I prepare myself and, and asking God for him to move in me. But how often am I asking God, God prepare the way of the Lord for others to come and know you. How often as a church body are we preparing the way of the Lord so that he can come in? You know, the, the idea is that you go before the king and you're laying bricks and roadway so that his, 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 um, his chariot or his carriage or whatever is pulling him into town can come in and make way to the people. and The people can see who is coming down the road. And I I believe now more than ever, we need to be those that not only have prepared our hearts, because again, we do need to be ready. But how are we actively preparing the way that Jesus could come in and that people can be led to him? I think in a couple practical ways that we can do this in our conversations. I was talking to a friend yesterday about this whole idea of preparing the way of the Lord. And he brought up the point of, you know, I think about all the conversations I have during the week. And I think about all these 
um, times maybe I have an opportunity. And he said, obviously, our conversations are different now this in this time because we're doing a lot more online. But how often are we maybe before we even have conversations with people or meetings with people saying, Lord, help me prepare the way for you. Help me prepare the way for Jesus to come into someone's life. Help me prepare the way of the Lord today for whoever may be ready to receive you. And it it was convicting to me because I think a lot of times I have conversations or avoid conversations to stay in my comfort zone, to stay feeling okay and comfortable rather than, God, how do you want to use me today to prepare the way of the Lord? Because there's going to be a great and a dreadful day that comes. When Jesus comes back, the Bible says it, we're preparing, we're going before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I definitely want to be looking at that day as a great day. But how many people may look at that day when that day comes and, and it's a dreadful day because they missed out. They missed out on a chance. And let it not be that they miss out because we didn't prepare the way good enough or well enough. And that's not to hammer you over the head and say, you know, get out there and, you know, do the work of the Lord or else. But I'm praying for myself, too, to be inspired by the Holy Spirit, by the power and the Spirit, to realize that there's more to this life than what we see. There's more to this life than what we see today that there is a preparation that people um, are waiting for us to prepare the way of the Lord. There's a people in the valley of decision, the Bible talks about, that are waiting. And if they make a decision to follow Christ, that's awesome. That It'll be a great day when Jesus comes back. But if they don't, it'll be a dreadful day. And us as, as followers of Christ, we're called in this time to prepare the way of the Lord. And I think in this time of fasting and praying that we need to be asking God like never before, God, prepare my heart to be a preparer of the way of the Lord. Because if we can, if we can begin to cultivate our own heart and our own spirit, then God can bring the power. The, the Bible talks about the spirit and the power of Elijah. I think we need to cultivate our spirit to be ready for the power of God to move, that we wouldn't take credit for it, that we wouldn't um, begin to fanfare our fame for what God wants to do through his power, but that there would almost be, I, I remember a prophecy that came several years ago by Pastor Eric Butler um, over our church and over some, I, I think it was during a prayer meeting, but he had said there, there needs to be a no name revival, a no name revival, meaning that no man stamps his name on the move of God that's going to come in these last days, because it's not about any person. It's not about any man. It's not about any one church or any, it, it's about the church, the global church of God pursuing him. And revival comes when we realize it's not about us. And so a no-name revival would be that Jesus' name is lifted up, that Jesus is the one who we've prepared the way for. We haven't just prepared ourselves to be well-known. We've prepared Jesus to be known and his name to be above every name. I think in these past few weeks and months, we've seen more than ever that God would be saying that it's time for his glorious church to rise up. It's time for his church to arise in love and in grace and preparing the way of the Lord and not in our opinions and not in our sides, but in preparing the way of the Lord. It's time for the power to be restored in the church. There's been 
I believe, a time and a season where, you know, the miraculous has has not been as evident as I believe we'd all like it to be. And we need a restoration of the power of God in the church and in our lives and in the way we prepare to prepare the way of the Lord. It's a time for the church to also be joyful and recover what we've lost and be restored to what God has promised us, be restored to the full inheritance of what God has promised us. That's joyful. That's that's some great news to share, the inheritance of eternal life, the inheritance that He loves us and that He died on the cross for us and there's life and life more abundantly, that He left us something through His Holy Spirit, that He has deposited something in us that we should share with others. These last days are going to be a time when the people of God should possess the power of Elijah. And I just want to go through these points. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, this is kind of an intro to the next couple of weeks. But the power of Elijah included some pretty amazing things. If you think about what he did, and you can read about his story, obviously, in the Bible. But he had eight specific things that we're going to look at that were pretty amazing. These eight power areas were a part of his life, a part of his ministry. And I just want to talk about these for a moment because they're pretty amazing. This is what the church is supposed to possess. And I don't want to get weird about it. I don't want to get, you know, too out there about it. But these are things that the Bible has told us that the church should be the preparer of the way. We should have the spirit and power of Elijah. And these are some of the things, some of the powerful things that Elijah saw take place. One was authority over the elements, rain specifically. In 1 Kings 17, 1, it says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years except at my word. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, it says in James 1, 17. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. So he was a man like us. He had a nature like ours. He was he he dealt with depression. He dealt with fear. He dealt with um being accepted. He dealt with being alone. We see this in his story in, in First Kings that he was isolated for a while. He was alone. He was actually depressed and told God, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And God kept moving through him and he had he had the ability to pray. And see the power of God move because he had allowed his spirit to be prepared to allow God to move through him. And so in this time of prayer and fasting, and I'm not saying go out and pray um, over that to stop the rain right now. You have to know that God's leading you to do that. But it's pretty amazing that God moved in his life like this. He had an ability to pray and it stopped raining. He had ability to pray and then it started raining. And if the church would raise up and prepare our hearts for the power of God to move and to see, man, if we need to pray for something to break through and it happens and God does amazing things and we wouldn't take the credit for it, we would just give the glory to God. A second thing that in his life, in, a, in the power of God moved through him was a divine protection in the face of opposition. God miraculously preserved his life. From the persecution of Ahab, the king, the wicked king then. And for, that reminds me of Doc McStuffins. If you've ever seen Doc McStuffins, there's the little toy. He's named the wicked king. Anyways, and from those who sought his life, God protected him. God surrounded him. God insulated him 
and helped him continue to prepare for the power of God to move through him because God had a purpose for him. God protected him. In these times and seasons, I know many people are praying for protection, are praying for protection from the virus, are praying for protection from, um, from extremists, the, the movements that we're seeing happen. And, and they're praying for protection just on their daily life. And that's something that the power of God be, began to do in the way he ministered in and through Elijah. And so as we rise up as the church who prepares our heart to be used by the power of God, to be used in the spirit of God, as we prepare our hearts and spirits, these are things I believe we can pray for. We can pray, God, give us powerful prayers that can even affect God, um, the, the nature of things. God, give us powerful prayers that can even bring a protection, God, around our, our homes and our families, God, that we would see your hand guide and protect in a powerful way. Another way is divine provision in times of, of, of terrible tribulation, of terrible times. He saw God provide. God gave Elijah miracle bread. You read the story in 1 Kings 17, 6 and 9. He brought to him by the ravens, by the brook. He was laying by the brook and the ravens brought him bread and meat. And there was water there at the brook to sustain him in a famine that lasted over three years. That's trouble. That's tribulation, famine, no food around. But yet God miraculously provided for him. Come on, we're seeing in this time like crazy things take place that we haven't in our day. We can believe for God to continue to provide for us. So we prepare our heart and our spirit. I want to stop there for today. And we'll continue through some of the things, that the eight things. But we just went through three today. And I believe that as we get hungry for the Spirit of God to prepare us, that the power of God is going to move in and through us as we prepare the way for Him. And I, I don't know, I just feel like today that this message impacted me so much and I don't even know if I'm conveying it the way that, that, I, that I thought I would. But I do know that God is wanting to move powerfully in this time. In all times he wants to. But how ready are we? How prepared are we to prepare the way of the Lord? I think he's, he's desiring. He's desiring to come and move and to bring salvation, to bring healing, to bring miracles, to, to bring provision. He's desiring to do all these things. But if our only desire is to see the miracle happen, and we haven't prepared our hearts to then be preparers of the way of the Lord, then we're just going to kind of fizzle out as, as time goes on. But if we truly say, Lord, use my life to be one who prepares the way for you to move. So often we say, God, use me to move. God, use me in a powerful way. Use me, and that's that's good in in, in the heart is right, and but I, I believe in this time we need to say, God, use me so that you can move, whether it's through me, whether you use me to prepare the way and you move through someone else, whatever it may be. God, use me to prepare the way of the Lord. That's the kind of life in these times that I believe we are supposed to live, is to be those that continue to prepare the way of the Lord that people would see that God wants to move in a powerful way. And I believe that God wants to use you in a powerful way. And so I encourage you, use this time, this fast, as a time to cry out to God again. Repent. If, repent. I'm not even going to say if necessary, because we all need to repent. Repent. Turn your heart back to Him. Repent for anything that you know as you've, you've done wrong in your life. Repent for your sins. Repent for the sins that so easily entangle you. 
repent and ask him to prepare you to be one who prepares the way of the Lord. I don't want to just use this year to prepare for me to be better. You know, 10 steps to prepare your life to be better. I want to be one who has allowed the Holy Spirit to prepare my heart to be ready to prepare the way of the Lord. And I pray that for you in this time and that our life would not grow smaller and smaller and just be surrounded um, or that we would be the center of our own world. And, and, and what can we get out of this time and what can we do? But we would be those who are generously preparing the way of the Lord so that we can enlarge our life, enlarge the impact that our life has on the world around us. And that's why I'm excited to use Pastor Frank Damasio's 21 prayers to enlarge your life, to, um, to see, you know, the scriptures that are tied to the prayers that he has put out are excellent. And I'm thrilled that that's available to us as a resource. And we're going to email that um, to you, that, that resource. And we're just going to seek God and, and ask his Holy Spirit to begin to prepare our hearts. And so right now, just as we close, I just ask if you would just put your hand on your heart and on maybe one on your heart, one on your mind, because our mind can block what God wants to do in and through us. Sometimes we just, we start thinking of all the things we're afraid of. We start thinking of all the things we have to do or, or that we need to um, get out of our lives or that we've messed up in and, 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 and just allow the Holy Spirit right now to just hover over you and bring a peace that passes all your understanding. And so God, we ask right now that you would just prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, prepare our spirits to go into a time of seeking you. And that as we go into this time of seeking you and we, God, give up certain foods or we give up food altogether, or we give up media or social media, or we give up TV or we give up whatever things we're, we're laying before you. God, I pray that you would prepare us to be those that prepare the way of the Lord for others to hear and know you are the way, the truth, and the life. God, we want to open up our lives to be those that are used by you so that we can help prepare the way of the Lord, just like John the Baptist did. Prepare you the way of the Lord. It wasn't about him. It was about preparing for you to come and reach the people. God, we aren't the Savior. We are the preparers. We can prepare the meal. But God, you're going to satisfy. You're going to be the one who brings salvation to the world around us. And it sounds so far out, God. It sounds so out of this world kind of thinking, God. But I pray we would. Stop thinking like the world thinks. We would think outside of this world and we would think the way you do. Give us the mind of Christ. Let us not be afraid of letting go of our life so we can gain it. God, we want to be used by you in a powerful way. I pray for every person right now. There will be an anointing on them, God, to, 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 be, um, to have grace to fast. To have grace to... Set aside time to pray. God, I know when we go into these times, God, the enemy works hard to try to distract us or make us feel weak and make us feel like we aren't doing good enough. And then we can kind of throw it all away in one day and say, oh, I haven't done it. I I'm just going to not do this. But I just pray for grace upon every person, every home, every uh, person fasting and praying, God, that there would be a renewed mind, a renewed heart, a renewed spirit, God, to seek you first, Lord. God, we want to see you move. Pray you'd enlarge our life, God, but prepare us to be those that are used to prepare the way of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. And again, we're going to send out to those who are part of a live church and we have your emails um, and your contact info, we will send out the resources for the fast. Again, we sent it out last week. But we'll do that again so you have that. And uh, we're looking forward to starting tomorrow. We'll do a, a, um, we'll do a live stream either on Facebook or, or YouTube tomorrow. Um, 
uh, we'll send out the times and, and how we're going to do that in the email. But we just want to just connect with you during this fast because we know if you if you go for it alone, it can be lonely. But uh, together, even though it's online community right now, together is always better. And we want to make sure that we're here for you. You have any questions or you need prayer, uh, please reach out. Please don't just... Uh, think that you're going to send us a prayer request and then put it off. Send in your prayer request so we can be praying for you and um, and be standing with you to see God move in this season of prayer and fasting. So once again, God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. and We will see you next Sunday. Actually, we'll see you before that because we're going to do some stuff for the fast, but we'll see you for service next Sunday. Take care. God bless. Mm-hmm.